So previously when I was making the high-low gear reduction for the gearbox, I thought to myself that it was about time that I did something that I've been putting off for about 4 years now, and that's going to be to make a captive drawbar for the milling machine. Now the reason why you'd want one of these on a mill is pretty self-explanatory. The way that it works on this milling machine is that all the tooling is held in place in this Morse taper. Now a Morse taper is only 1 or 2 degrees, so it's generally self-locking, but when you need to use it in applications such as milling when there's a side force, it needs to be held in place, held in the taper itself, and this is usually done through the use of a drawbar. And all the drawbar really is, is just a long screw that goes all the way through the spindle and holds the tooling in place. This is just there to prevent the tooling from falling out when there's a side force. And to take it one step even further, most of my tooling has a 20mm shank and they're all held in place by the means of a Morse taper collet. And on a practical level, it makes swapping tooling in and out to be much quicker. But to be able to use it, you do need that drawbar to pull the collet up into the Morse taper to fasten down on the tooling. Now to release the tooling, you have to undo the drawbar by a few threads and then you have to hit it pretty hard with a hammer to release the tool. And for the most part, whilst it doesn't damage the tooling because most of the tooling that I have is hardened, it isn't all that good for the threads on the lead screw. More importantly though is that if we swap this for a captive lead screw, we can ditch the hammer and socket combo for some sort of impact driver, which means we can do tool changes in a matter of seconds. And to those of you who don't know what a captive lead screw is, really, they're rather quite simple. If you look at this cross section of the mill spindle, you'll see the drawbar that goes all the way through the middle. And all we're looking to do is make the top and the bottom of the drawbar to be wider than the main shaft. And in doing so, it won't be able to move upwards or downwards. And what this means is that when we undo the drawbar, it should, instead of the drawbar moving upwards, it should force the tooling or the collet downwards, which should release the tool. This skips the need to hit it with a hammer and is a big step in being able to build a proper power drawbar. Now the thing is, the reason why I put this off for so long is that I thought that I'd have to do a lot of modification to the mill spindle or even have to completely rebuild it in order to make the lead screw captive. And the reason for that is that I thought that the flange that would make the lead screw captive would have to be done all at the top. And that would mean that the whole of the top of the spindle would need to be modified and extended upwards to accept some sort of double flange. Which is rather tricky because there's not a whole lot of material here and you need to keep all of the spline shaft intact in order to get the full amount of travel on the quill. But as it turns out, the solution was rather easy. Now all of this hinges on this little bit of dead space located in the spindle. And by dead space I mean it's not part of the Morse taper, but it also forms this sort of shoulder that could be used to make a flange captive. At least in theory, because there is not a whole lot of space to work with here. But in theory, if I can get some sort of flange nut put in there and maybe fixed in place, it should be enough to make the lead screw captive. Now I will admit, doing it this way may seem a bit counterintuitive. There are other videos out there that do this a little bit differently. But if I do it this way, I should be able to reuse the drawbar, which is a good thing because I only made it about 9 months ago and the last thing I want to do is get rid of it. And more importantly for you, you should be able to do this very easily using the drawbar that you already have in your milling machine. So the first thing that we need to do is make some sort of flange nut to go on the threads. And doing it this way should help set the correct location and the distance for the flange. You'll see what I mean by this in a minute. So we'll start off with some 19mm steel, which is the correct outside diameter for the flange that we want. So the first thing we'll do is clean up the end and then get a hole drilled for some M12 threads. With the threads now cut, I'll then turn down the end diameter. This needs to be done because the main part of the shaft is only 14mm and the threads on the drawbar extend quite a fair bit into the main shaft.
And then finally, I'll get the part parted off. Now the exact length that you want may vary machine to machine, and all we're really trying to avoid here is for the top of the Morse taper of your tooling bottoming out on that flange. I cut mine a little bit too long and you'll see what that looks like in a minute. That is the flange now made. And it screws onto the drawbar like so. And doing that whilst it's inside the milling machine does take a bit of effort, but it's not all that difficult. And that is really how it's all going to go together. With that said though, friction is not going to be enough to hold it all in place. So to fix it in place, I'm simply going to use a roll pin. And in doing so, it should be very easy to fix in place and also pull apart when it needs to be pulled apart. So we'll get it set up in the vise and get a hole drilled all the way through it. And with the hole now drilled all the way through, we can now start to get it fully assembled. Alright, that went in pretty easily. Let's see how it works. I don't currently have an impact driver, so I'm currently using a socket set, but as you can see, I'm pulling the collet up and then I'm loosening it, and I'm doing this all without using a hammer, and that's a much better way of doing it compared to what I was having to do before. Unfortunately though, we are having one issue, and that's the collet is starting to slip inside the Morse taper. And after a bit of investigating, I found out that the collet was bottoming out on the bottom of that flange nut. So after a quick trip to the lathe where I removed a bit of material from the bottom of the flange nut, the captive drawbar is working pretty much flawlessly. All in all, I'm really happy with this upgrade and I'm just amazed at how easy and quick it was to do. Now outside of this, it works really well if you have some sort of spindle lock on your milling machine at the same time. It is still pretty good if using an old fashioned pin wrench to hold the spindle in place whilst you change the tool, but if you have a proper spindle lock, this is really a huge game changer. Now in terms of my spindle lock, I did have to modify it ever so slightly to make it work a little bit better with this sort of setup. In that I removed the spring which pushes the spindle lock outwards. This is so that I can hold the tooling with my left hand so that it doesn't fall out of the collet and onto the workpiece. Now if you really wanted to, depending on how much space you have in there, you could make some sort of bronze nut to reduce friction, or I guess you could probably make the flange nut itself out of bronze. But really, I think adding a dab of grease in there is going to be more than good enough to reduce the friction. Now of course, to make sure that I don't accidentally engage the spindle lock when the milling machine is running, I did go in and add a ball detent to the pin, just to make sure that the pin can't move from its outwards position unless you move it with a fair amount of force. The result of adding this is that it takes a bit more force to start pushing in the pin, and it should hold the pin in the unlocked position. And over at the VFD, I did change some settings with respect to its stalling at low RPM, just so that if I engage it with the pin already in it, it won't cause much damage to the belt or the motor or any other part of the milling machine. Alright, and there we have it. Literally less than an hour to do this upgrade, and you can use the drawbar that you're already using in your milling machine. In my opinion, great little upgrade, I should have done it years ago, and honestly, I am just so glad that it was as easy to do as it actually was. And with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time.